czekamy. Koło to czeka. Niby wipy, ale kolejka musi być. Za chwilę wiatr, zobaczymy co będzie w środku. No i słuchajcie, otagowany opaskami wszystkim. 100 milionów opasek. Dzisiaj zwiedzanie produkcji. Zobaczymy, czy tam będzie można coś nagrać, czy nie. A jak nie, to tu najwyżej. Jeszcze kubeczek dostałem. Także teraz tylko czekać. Czyli można filmować, kto się chwali. Jesteś w wążu. Right, cheers. Kurde, teraz nie wiadomo co filmować, nie? Dokładnie. Normalnie człowiek idzie, nie wie co filmować, tyle tego jest do filmowania. Siebie, tył, scena, petarda jest. Ucieczka na scenę dotarła. Gary Larsa przykryte. Jest moc. So welcome. We are. We share this page with Natalia. Yeah, yeah. You share. You're gonna come up here too and sing a song. We didn't tell you that was part of the package. No, unfortunately, that'd be right. pretty cool though. Would be. Uh, so welcome, guys. We are on what we affectionately call Lucy. Uh, why do you? Why do we call this stage Lucy? You ask. Well, it's to keep track of the pieces, right? So we also have our festival stage. We have Lucy and we have Ethel. Previous. How many of you went on the Hardwired tour? Anybody go to the Hardwired tour? Anyone want to guess the name of that stage? Based on Lucy and Ethel. Bonus points, come on. Anybody? American 50s sitcoms? Yeah. Fred. Lucy, Ethel, and Fred. I love Lucy. Ah, yes. There's also a little mini piece of stage that if you have not seen the show, I'm not going to ruin for you. That is, uh, it's, it's Ricky. So we have all of the characters of I Love Lucy. Yeah. So look for that later in the show. Uh, by the second show, when you guys do the meet and greet, you'll understand what it is, and we can kind of tell you what it is. Isn't it? Pretty sweet. Uh, but anyways, you're standing on Lucy right now. So we do that to keep track of the pieces. There is a separate stage for the festival setup. It's a little bit different, obviously. Some of the pieces can be intermingled back and forth over here. Uh, so if we need to, to change them out, we do have spares all over, right? So they're back there. You'll see some of them later today, kind of intermingled how we put them. Um, I'll kind of show you how they're labeled and how we keep track of those, because it's like a giant puzzle, right? How do you, how do you know where, what goes where? There's a lot of stuff going on, right? Uh, throughout the stage, you guys, you'll see it. Every four times, every ten times around the stage is four tenths of a kilometer. I had to translate that from American terms. I would have done it in English yesterday in U.S. terms because it was America Day, but for you guys, I'm going back to the metric system. So every 10 times around this stage, four tenths of a kilometer. So do the math on that, how many times those guys are going around. It's a lot, it's a lot of kilometers. A lot, a lot of walking and doing things on there. Going pretty crazy throughout the show. You can imagine how many calories they're burning throughout the whole thing. They're very sweaty men at the end. It's a very smelly thing, trust me. You don't wanna, you don't wanna, it's men stink. It's, it's, it's musk, it's great. Uh, so anyways, throughout the stage you'll see several things. The first thing I like to point out to everybody is these lovely things you guys see in front of those. For those of you who do not know, those are called monitors. So monitors do two things. Uh, the one you will see right here, it's covered unfortunately right now because of the sunlight, they're trying to make sure it doesn't overheat, uh, we'll display lyrics on there. So as any band gets older, they have a larger song catalog, they need to remember those lyrics of things like Cthulhu or Orion, 
Yep. Easy, Easy. We got some excited. Okay, okay. You, know, you guys kind of got the joke there. There's no lyrics in those songs, so what goes on the monitor? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just kind of. Yeah. It's my joke. It's my joke. Some some people get it, some don't. But don't worry about it. It's funny. Uh, anyway, so the, the lyrics will come up on those those monitors, so they can see what's going on in every other song. A lot of lyrics to remember. It's true of any bands. No band's going to say they don't do that. The other thing I do up there is messages of things like, hey, here's what's going on for this song, watch out for pyro, things like that. Um, that all is displayed right there for the band, right? To the right and the left of them, you'll see audio wedges on there. Those are so the band can hear kind of what you guys are hearing on a mini version of it. So that blasts the entire mix of sound towards them. So they kind of get a wash to know what's going on. On top of that, they also have what they call in-ear monitors. And we'll take a look at that. It's kind of run out of this area over here towards the back. Uh, but basically, if the band needs to hear anything, so say James wants, you know, Lars on earphone 2, more of the downbeat, he can do that so he can hear and be with them. So it's kind of a way for them to hear what's going on, because the sound in here is very hard to track when it bounces around where you guys would hear it from versus them. So we want to make sure they know what they're hearing on. Uh, throughout the stage, you also see the pedals. Um, we have, well, not all of them out right now, we have just perks, I believe, yep. Uh, so of that, we'll have eight of those pedals out there for when you get to this level of rock and roll, uh, how many of you guys know Dead & Co or Fish or those bands? You know, the old, you know, the old uh, the Grateful Dead, those sort of things. Anybody? No Dead fans at all. Jeez, oh man, kill me. So anyways, if you look at those, most of those bands have giant pedal boards, right? Where they're pressing these things to play yep. this sound to play that. We do not have that in Metallica land. We have basically our wah pedals up here. The guitar techs then change all of those sounds for them through what we call a fractal board. They will change it per song. It has gone wrong before. It does happen in a long time, but it's very funny to hear certain songs in, in the wrong tones, right? So it does happen, but not so much here. We don't like to do it. Uh, if you YouTube some of those videos, it's very funny to watch. And James is like, I'm going to go with it. Right. Uh, but anyways, we get this level, like I said, you don't press many of the, the, the pedals yourselves. So the only ones you'll see up here are Robert and Kirk's Waz. You can see Kirk's right behind you now, the purple thing. Uh, again, don't touch it. Take that. It's pretty. Uh, on top of that, the microphones are not out right now, again, because of the heat or the rain, we keep them underneath. They're actually right below you right now, in a little storage locker under the stage. Uh, we have about 16 of those, so eight and eight backups in there for all the band members. We do audio checks for each one throughout the sound check to make sure each one is, is good to go. The name of touring is redundancy. We want to make sure if something breaks down, we're good to go, right? So we can put a new one. Yeah. <laughs> Underneath the stage, you'll see, you won't be able to see it, but we have a joke about list, lifting Lucy's skirt, right? Um, there's a whole village underneath you of microphones, extra drum sets, wiring, cables, monitors, all sorts of things that are there, modems, just stuff to keep the show going. Literally in giant city underneath your feet right now. Our jobs make it look pretty, so you don't even see that. How often does it go bad? More than you would think, uh, but and for us, it's, it's very hard to notice. So it's... Metallica is such a large band that it's very rare it goes down. It does happen. It's unavoidable at times. Uh, most of the stuff you guys will notice is more things. If it's very large, it does happen. We've had power go down before. Kind of crazy to watch where you're like, where'd all the power go? Um, it flickers and then goes off. Uh, for the most part, we have such a talented team, the stuff will go up within 20 seconds. Uh, Lars really wants that to be the case, like perfection in a show. Um, so most of the time, the things you'll see that'll go wrong are more things like, hey, a drum head broke, or something like that, or a guitar string broke, and that's an easy thing to fix. Just switch out the guitar, right? Uh, the bigger stuff takes a few more seconds here and there, something like a light going down. We'll talk about that when we get the towers up there, but for the most part, the stage, it, it, it's pretty, pretty functional. Uh, except when I put too many people on the risers and get yelled at by large groups. Um, but anyways, speaking of the risers, we do have four of those drum sets. Don't stand on this. Yeah, don't stand on that because I get in trouble and then I have to answer the boss man and say, hey, why couldn't I come up today? Maybe we will go to Lars to tell him. Yeah, it's like so. We don't want him to know. No, um, the goal is that he doesn't know that. We're large in numbers, so it's twenty to one, mate. So anyways, we have four of those throughout the stage. You guys know everyone's kind of seen the show, so I'm not ruining any surprises here, right? Uh, so we have our drum risers here. The drums are currently under the stage. They pop up. It's a pretty cool thing. So we can do four of those things uh, throughout the stage. Uh, the other thing to point out over here, if you look behind you, these are our two pyro holes right here. Uh, the smaller little circular ones are for your little pop shots. Those are like the sparking effects there. And then the big holes for your flavor, right? Uh, we don't have a lot of them on Metallica anymore. We're not really into the big fancy. We did these towers instead. We thought they'd be cool. Love the pyro to Rammstein. It's a whole lot of extra stuff going on up there. To answer your question, it does go wrong in that world sometimes, but back when we did have a lot of pyro, uh, our pyro guy in Germany actually, he had like a false fuse or something in a storage container and set off all the pyro. One wow. of the scariest things I've ever seen in my life, because you're like, what is happening over there? And he came out and was all beat up, and luckily he was very safe. He, he had some burns and things, but it does happen. It's a very dangerous industry we live in. 
Um, but it doesn't happen often, thank God. Um, so anyways, you have these, these pyro holes over here. You're wondering, wow, those are very hard to see, especially in the dark. Yeah, you're right. So how does the band avoid those? If you notice during the songs, for the most part, band members are pretty much beyond the bridges up here. So they know the two songs they're going to play that have the pyro. Listed up here on this monitor says, hey, pyro coming in XYZ. They can also hear it in the monitor there that says pyro, 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 so they're out of the way. Right? So we don't want anybody to get burned, you know, say, like Montreal style. We're trying to avoid that again. Kind of the whole thing. Um, so other than that... Yeah, that's our stage, guys. It's pretty cool, right? It's so big. The, yeah, it's very big. Like I said, four tenths of a kilometer for every ten times around. Weighs about 14 tons. We call it the sombrero. Um, they're with us, so they get the whole backstage tour as well, like you guys do. Um, this is less cool. Okay, okay. <laughs> there is way more fun. Um, so, guys, anyway, welcome to the Snake Pit. How many of you have been to the Snake Pit before? One, four, two, two. All right, all right. So, wow, all right. So, this is pretty cool. Uh, you guys won't really get to see this thing as empty as this, so take it all in right now before it gets packed in here for the show. It does get a little bumpy in here as everyone gets in. Um, I will tell you, the fan is starting from this side over here, so yours is probably going to be somewhere over here on this side. Uh, if that's what your fancy is, um, the fan is coming from that side too. So use that information as insight or whatever you want to do, wherever you want to stand. There's no bad place to stand in here though, guys. Uh, as you go around throughout the show, make sure you follow the band for different songs and things, especially when they get up on the bridges there. It's very cool to take some of those cool shots from underneath. Don't stand in one spot for them, though. Like, everyone hates it, but it's kind of like that. Um, here's how it's going to be a little bit smaller than Snake Pit. It's about 850 people to 1,000, depending on the fire marshal now. Uh, in this tour, we've decided to lower down the stage a little bit to get you guys closer to the action, which is pretty cool. Uh, first time we've done that. Uh, the origin of the Snake Pit is kind of cool. Uh, one of the band's managers, I was actually in New York City in uh, the Tavern on the Green, uh, sitting in the chef's kitchen table. I said, why don't we apply this to a rock show? And thus the snake pit was born. Still trying to figure out the year on that, but around 1989, 91, somewhere in there, is when we kind of started doing that. It's been our baby ever since. Best seats in the house, right? And you guys get to do it. Uh, if you look above us, we can see some cool things up here. You guys are wondering how we came up with this crazy design. This is kind of the newest thing in touring. We're doing all this hanging stuff over us. Looks a lot like a circus tent, right? That's because it basically is that design. It came from circuses. Same thing. Uh, above us, you'll see our speaker sets in here. This is the first time we've really done speakers facing towards you guys in the snake pit to get your own kind of concert experience. Sounds a lot better than years past, where it's kind of just bouncing around, relying on that sound in there. So you get a really good immersive concert experience in here. On top of that, you'll see, I don't know where they are today. Uh, we have sky cams that come through here. Uh, they're called spider cams, if you guys know from football, both American and, and European. Uh, those are typically, they are over there, sorry. I lost them, I lost them. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool thing. Uh, most of those, those games, they use uh, one or two, but we have two here. We are in Texas, we used four. That's the most of any live event. So we had four of those spider cams going throughout here to live broadcast to the cinemas around the world. And I'll show you the, the world later that kind of, kind of controls us. It's like a giant video game. It's pretty neat that goes on there. But pretty cool we have it. We're one of the only bands that really does that. There's a few others out there that kind of can afford it, but it's a big part of our team. It's pretty sweet. Um, on top of that, about three quarters of the way through the show, I'm not going to ruin the surprise for you, but you know, make it to that line right there. Start to see some people get into the middle. Eh, it's usually around Whiskey in the Jar, one of those songs. Um, I think of the other ones. Usually it's Robert May Rome, another one that's been popular in there, but pretty cool surprise that goes through on that line right now. So make sure you make it out. You know, it all makes sense if it'll be green, but like, hey, you told us about that, right? Yeah, it's on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, it'll be pretty cool. But, anyways, that's the Snake Pit, guys. Um, pretty sweet all around. We'll head on out while well, there's nobody here. We'll check out one of the tech stations. Take a little bit longer to watch. 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 Take um, basically the band, they come in and they tune every guitar up to what they're going to tune to for the day. New strings across the board, clean the guitars, make sure they're shiny and new for everything to go up there. Uh, change out different guitars, so say, anybody know who Greeny is? Anybody a Greeny fan? Greeny is a 56, 
Classic West Ball. Uh, been passed down through many famous hands throughout the years. Kirk uh, currently owns Greeny. Less ball you'll see it comes out every once in a while. Very valuable guitar. Uh, Greeny has a, a stipulation that whoever Greeny is sold to or given to, Greeny needs to be played by a touring musician. So we're lucky enough to have Kirk out. Pretty neat to hear them. They are very talented themselves. Uh, but you can kind of see all the toys Zach plays with over there to get everything like digital and pristine, uh, including some of those pedals over there that, again, Dan is impressive himself. They're pressing them all together. Uh, you can see basically they're a rock climber, but for the music industry, they will go up there, climb up there, make sure everything's working, they plug things in and out when they need to be fixed, as well as we have the cats that go up there, the giant leg, free lift, right? So it's a combination of things. Uh, we don't really do it during the show, but that would be typically called the nest during a show that has a typical uh, stage set up inside. There's usually someone in there, right? So it's, you're sitting up in the nest, so always look up there at a the concert. You'll see a guy kind of way, you're probably low. Not at this one, you're all out of there because we got all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, Metallica likes to do things on this tour, it's 72, do you guys know what 72 stands for? 72 seasons, right? It's the 18 years of a child's life. We like to keep with that theme, it's kind of an inside joke among the designers of the whole stage and everything going on there. Um, there are multiples of 72, or, or the numbers in there, so, for example, each one of these lighting towers has nine lights on them. No, it's not known what the guest is saying. Co tu się dzieje w ogóle na tej scenie? Czy do czego? Ile głośników, monitorów, mikrofonów, wszystkiego? Petarda. Anyways, this is front of house, guys. Over here. Uh, for those of you who don't usually go through, they're open. Cool. So the doors did just open. If you do want to go to the snake pit, feel free. So feel free. To, you don't need to run. You'll be good. But head on over there. It'll open in a minute for you, all right? Um, I won't be offended. There are some cool things to get to show you in here. Uh, but anyways, this is front of house world over here. Uh, most concerts, this is the brainchild of where the, the show is run out of. So if you have any friends in the show, you want to see a really cool show, always watch them over here. We are not like that. We like to keep things hidden. Most of the stuff you see here is for the opening act, like a traditional band out there. But again, if you're at a normal show that's not like this, you've got crazy power, it's the best place to go, watch them there. Why do I say that? The people controlling the show are watching from there, right? The sound, video, all that's going to be best from there. Uh, within here, the only thing we have is what our Metallica side is towards the back. That's monitor world, what we were talking about with the in-ear in -ear, uh, monitors there. So if the band needs to hear something, say James again, wants a more downbeat bars on whatever, you can get into this here, right? You can communicate with them via the microphone. Hello guys, you're gonna be on YouTube, say hello. Hello. Also, yeah. So we got these grids right here. After the show, we'll have a bunch of people stage hands come out. Basically bring these out to wherever they're gonna be set up and broken down. And they'll break them down, put them in there, kind of like a giant puzzle. So puzzle, reverse puzzle. But you gotta put that puzzle back in certain little quadrants, otherwise the whole thing gets crazy. But again, the moral of the story is pretty cool. Don't usually see one of those labels on there. There's two stages. Just a sheer volume. Okay. Some shows were done by 4 a.m. Uh, the steel, the backbone, all the heavy stuff will stay up until the next day and they'll break that down separately. But for the most part, most of the crews will be out by 3, 4 a.m. every day. 
it's a crazy process to watch that many people run on the floor. Um, every once in a while, Lars will come out there and hang out and say, hey, look what's going on there. If you've seen any of those Instagram videos, but pretty neat. Cool, well, let's head back and go to the lab. Any questions, guys? I covered a lot of those. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and ask you Yeah, but come over and be my friend. I still won't get those names because D's next to Z's make no sense to me, but I'll try. <laughs> I will. <laughs> so, you'll meet him tomorrow. There's a man named Damien. He's going to be in the meet and greet. Don't hate Damien. He can get a little, little crazy sometimes. He's a great guy, but he's developing this, this spa, um, and he, gets, he gave me the hat. So I figured, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a great, I don't know, it's, it's just a great thing he's doing there. So he's like, yeah, and he gave it to me as a gift. I also needed a hat because I burned very easily. So, um, yeah, and I figured, you know, I'll wear the Polish, rock the Polish, and it's, it's kind of a fun one. So it's going to be a giant spa. You can ask him about it. Unmissable character. He's got a cowboy hat and everything. You'll love him. What are you thinking? Uh, I'm going to come at some point for sure. So, yeah, i got to check it out because he's, he's told me about it. All, I love Poland. It's been great this time. So. And John Michael and I were joking, we don't remember coming to Warsaw the last time, I think it was in 2018. I was like, we've definitely been here. And then I saw the state, I'm like, oh, we've definitely been here. I remember it now. And I remember all the places I went. So, had a great time every time. I'll be back. But again, if you don't hear my wing back stories, feel free to go in the lounge. I won't be offended again. Everything's open for you down there as well. Um, somebody asked over here, my favorite member of the band. I don't really have a favorite. I do have stories with them. So, I have been out with them before, obviously, over the years. Uh, eight years now with the band myself doing this. We launched this program in 2017. Uh, I've been here for every touring show since then and all that. They brought me back and said, hey, you want to do this again after COVID? I did, so here I am with you guys. Uh, my favorite story is uh, when the Eagles, so I used to be the mascot for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, anybody know the NFL? Yeah, so Philadelphia Eagles. That's my back, my villain backstory was I was the Eagles mascot for a number of years. Really? Yep. Oh, yeah, okay. That's my origin story. Um, so we were in Barcelona, or no, Barcelona, Madrid actually, going back, funny enough. The Eagles were in the Super Bowl, and my friends were there, people I worked with, and we were watching with the band in a hotel. Um, you know, we had a keg for us and all that. James came and sat with us on ours. I think James came, Lars came at one point, Robert was in there. Uh, so the band didn't want to sit with a side of our production that was all Boston fans. Most of us in, in our VIP world, enhanced experience. Uh, we were from Philadelphia at some point, so we all had the Philly connection, especially myself. So the band came and sat on our side. Now, I say that's funny because I'm sitting there and I'm very drunk at this point because I'm an Eagles fan, my team's in the Super Bowl, my friends are all calling me, like I'm there. Apparently I cried when they went, they won. Uh, my, my coworker sitting next to me says, you turned around and hugged James and cried? And I'm like, I don't remember any of that. <laughs> I don't remember any of it. And my friends all called me and said, hey, what are you doing? Um, so that's my weird James story today. I have a few others where I'm always in an awkward situation with him, but he's okay. always great about it. He's a very nice guy. Uh, Lars, I've interacted with several times throughout the time, just, just in passing through the museum and all those things through there. Uh, the other member is also great. You know, Lord Kirk, Kirk and Lars, I uh, can't pronounce their names. Kirk and Rob, great guys across the board. Uh, Rob, every, if he sees you out to dinner next to you, he'll invite you over to the table to come join them. Um, Kirk, same way. We'll stop at the street, say hello and all that. So each one of them has their own little personality, works across the board, which is great. You know, get to know them after the year. So they don't know who I am. They wouldn't recognize me. They recognize Sean. They see him every day, but they probably know my face at this point. But maybe James, because I hugged him and it was awkward. <laughs> I don't know. Any other questions? Why James don't like a video Ha, good question. So, uh, a lot of it has to do with his voice. So, he has said that his voice likes to give out a lot, right? So, if he's doing like I'm doing right now, I'm feeling it right now. So, imagine doing what I'm doing right now, which you would do for 40 minutes in there, and then you have to go do a show. It wears on you over a tour. So, I totally get that. Uh, the other thing is just for his health, right? So, he's going through, he's been through a lot of stuff. He just, you know, it's not what he likes to do. He, he likes you guys, but for him, it's a lot of vocal for him that he has to do, and it's just to rest his voice for the most part. That's the real big answer. So there is no to you tomorrow. No. So that actually happened by chance forever ago. We first did them years ago. You saw in there, hey, he used to do them. He walked by our meet and greet and was like, all right, I'll do it once and said, that's not too bad. And he ended up doing it for them. Um, nowadays, with COVID and everything, especially considering he caught it once and we had to cancel shows, we're getting a little more careful. With it. So really what it comes down to, though, guys, is the vocal thing. It's, it's imagine doing what I'm doing right now and then having to do a show. It's not great for you when I do. Do you know who will be tomorrow? You know? Couldn't tell you, but it switches off every once in a while. It really depends on, on who's, who's there. Okay. Uh, the opposite is whoever's there. <laughs> what else you got, guys? Any other questions? 
Here we are. All right, so here we are at the Metallica backstage. So we're going to talk about American burgers for some reason. I don't know why, but it was requested. What's my favorite burger? Well, mine is something called the Elvis burger, right? Elvis burger is peanut butter, bacon, uh, and peanut, uh, peanut butter and bacon on a burger, right? Very weird, very American thing. Trust me, sounds weird. It's delicious. Right? right now, fun fact about the peanut butter and bacon burger: uh, we used to have a little contest on the tour where Chef Simon, the band chef who makes everything for the guys after the show, he literally would give us a little ticket, and you got a burger once a tour. So, he the fun fact about Chef Simon: he went to burger school, specialized in burgers at like Cordon Bleu. My turn comes up. I won. I'm excited for this. I'm a foodie. I talk to him all the time. I talk food back and forth. That's how we bonded. He goes, what kind of, what kind of Finch, what kind of burger do you want? I go, I want an Elvis burger. He goes, I don't know what that is. I go, peanut butter and bacon on a burger with cheese. He goes, I've never heard of that, and that's the most disgusting thing I think I've ever heard of in my life, but I'm going to try it with you. He tries it, and he goes, this is the greatest thing ever. He goes, you Americans with this stuff, and I went to burger school. Fast forward to a week later, the guy after me who won the burger contest requested the same exact thing, not knowing that I had done it. He goes, two weeks in a row. There's my burger. <laughs> W ogóle słuchajcie jaka akcja, nie? Bo gadam z tym gościem co, co prowadzą, że mój kumpel też jest na stadionie, ale siedzi na trybunie. O, no jak da radę dojść pod bramę numer jeden, to, 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 to Kuba jest w loży dla VIP-ów, nie? Ogarnięta wejścióweczka. Taki, taki się ma znajomych, a nie tam. Tak się załatwia. Jedziemy, bawimy się.
dobra, siemano, dzień drugi koncertu. Dzisiaj oby test na COVID wyszedł negatywny, ale i ja jak berety w ogóle z tym nie. Bo nas nie wpuszczą na zbicie piątki. I obstawiamy z kim się dzisiaj witamy. Ciekawe, nie? Już trochę ludzi czeka. Zobaczcie. Jest ekipa. Wjeżdżamy do środka. No i dobra, to opaskowany. Pieczątka jest. A z tyłu się testujemy na srowida. Znaczy no. Wiadomo, zobaczymy jak to wyjdzie. Także zaraz będzie wiadomo, czy będzie zbicie piątki, czy będzie zbijanie bomb. Trzeba być pozytywnie nastawiony. Czekamy na wyniki, zobaczymy czy wchodzimy, czy nie wchodzimy. Ale przycięło. Klatki A ty nagrywasz? No! Będzie sławna. Będzie, będziecie, będziecie na YouTube. No i dobra, po teście negatywny, także idziemy zbijać piątki z chłopakami. Jeszcze czekamy na resztę ludzików. I pewnie z pół godziny, bo z godziny poczekamy na, na jakieś tam tego, co nas będzie oprowadzał i tak dalej, nie? No i dobra, słuchajcie, za jakieś 5 minut e, z tym stadion. Za jakieś 5 minutek odbierają nas spod perkusji 16.15 i lecimy na meet and greet. Zbijać piątkę z chłopakami. Ciekawe kto będzie. Ciekawe kto będzie. Będę ciekawi najbardziej dzisiaj. Zobaczymy. No, a za mną już scena. Ludzie już się powoli schodzą. Bo 16 otworzyli bramki, więc się powoli już tam gdzieś pojawiają ludziki. No i jest petarda, jest moc dzisiaj. Zobaczymy co zagrają. Ciekawe, ciekawe. I oby nie padało, bo to jest najważniejsze. A no i taka ciekawostka mi się przypomniała, że po koncercie pod wieżą numer 7 dostajemy jeszcze podpisaną setlistę, jakieś tam plakaciki, pierdoły. No zobaczymy, zobaczymy co tam nam dadzą ciekawego. O, normalnie pogoda jest okrutna, się roztapiam w ogóle, nie? W tej Warszawie. <śmiech> Trzeba wrócić nad morze jak najszybciej, ale jest mocno. Jestem zadowolony, a to jest najważniejsze. Dobra, lecimy. No i dobra, słuchajcie, jesteśmy po spotkaniu. W zasadzie jeszcze coś tam sobie zjadłem w międzyczasie. Tylko szkolkę sobie zrobiłem. E, spotkanie e, było z e, Kirkiem i z Larsem. Spoko, chwilę, że tam sobie pogadali. Oczywiście nie wolno było nagrywać. A i te telefony w kieszeni, cudawianki mojej ranki, ale, ale, ale i tak mega opcja. Teraz jeszcze tam z godzinkę, dwie i wjeżdżamy na ostro. Także jeszcze trochę zostało, można coś tam zjeść, jeszcze się napić. E, przygotować się psychicznie, mam nadzieję, że nie będzie padać, to jest najważniejsze, ogólnie mega, mega, ogólnie super, nie? Także gdzieś tam zdjęcie jeszcze jakieś wrzucę, na pewno na Insta, jak już będzie można ściągnąć, jest moc, także jeszcze coś powiem po koncercie nagram, bo, bo coś tam jeszcze dostaniemy, aha, no dostaniemy co, podpisaną set listę, jakieś tam dwa plakaty, chyba coś tam jeszcze, no nie, nie istotne, także, także teraz już powoli support wyjechał, czekamy na, czekamy na Dwóch programu na drugi dzień koncertu mediów.
słuchajcie, wracam właśnie powoli sobie do hotelu. Jest już po północy chwilę. Koniec wrażeń, że tak powiem. Jutro koniec wrażeń, jutro trzeba wracać. Niestety. Jest moc. Plakaciki są. Set lista podpisana jest. Niezapomniane wrażenia są. Także mam nadzieję, że materiał, który oglądacie, bo Wam się podobał. No i do zobaczenia gdzieś tam na kolejnej jakiejś miejscówce, jakimś wydarzeniu, czy, czy gdzieś tam. Także trzymajcie się.